Hey everyone, and welcome back to the PTG Rail route learning series. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the Great Eastern Mainline London to Ipswich route, along with the freeware extension, which is available on Steam Workshop, between Ipswich and Norwich. So I'm going to be driving a full run of the route between London Liverpool Street and Norwich for a total journey distance of around 115 miles. The train that I'm driving follows the real-life timetable of train 1 Papa 04, which is the 6.25am Abellio Greater Anglia service from London Liverpool Street through to Norwich, with stops along the way at Stratford, Chelmsford, Whittam, Colchester, Manningtree, Ipswich, Stowmarket, Dis, and finally Norwich. The train that I'm driving on this journey today is formed of a Class 90 electric locomotive on the rear with nine Mark III coaches and a Mark III DVT on the front, which I will be driving from. So DVT stands for Driving Van Trailer and it's actually an unpowered driving coach. So you've got all of the cab controls in there controlling the locomotive at the other end of the train. The Class 90 locomotives were manufactured by British Rail Engineering Limited at Crew Works between 1987 and 1990, with a total of 50 of these locomotives produced. Each locomotive weighs 84.5 tonnes, and they have four traction motors of 1,250 horsepower each, or 930 kilowatts, making for a total power output of 5,000 horsepower. These locomotives have a maximum speed of 110 miles per hour, though the maximum speed limit on this route is 100 miles per hour, and so that will be the top speed we'll be able to get up to on this journey today. The locomotives have a tractive effort of 58,000 pounds of force, or 258 kilonewtons. Now that I'm in the cab of the DVT, let's quickly go through the startup procedure here. So I'm going to press Ctrl and Z and Ctrl and B to activate the train and also connect the battery. Now that I've done that, I'm going to move the reversing handle into the neutral position and reset the AWS self-test sequence. You also heard there briefly the driver safety device going off, so as soon as I move the reversing handle into the forward position, then the driver safety device will sound, and I'm going to have to reset that before we can move the train. So now that I've done that, the next thing I'm going to do is turn on the electrical train supply with the switch to the top right of the screen. It's the second from the left on the top row there, so if I just click on that, now in the bottom left of the screen, the ETS light has gone from red to two yellows, indicating that we now have the electrical train supply activated. So we've got heating and lighting and so on in the passenger coaches. Now as the signal ahead is clear, I'm now going to deactivate the driver reminder appliance. I'm going to turn on the instrument lights with the I key. Now if we go over to this side, I'm going to turn on the marker lights and then press the H key once to turn the headlights into the daytime setting. And now I'm going to quickly jump into the Class 90 locomotive at the rear of the train by pressing Ctrl and Plus on the keyboard. I'm just doing this just to turn on the tail lights so that we've got the red lights at the rear of the train as we're supposed to have. So now that I've done that, I'm going to press Ctrl and Minus to go back to the front cab. So I can quickly show you around the cab controls here. So if we look here, you can see the gauge in the middle of the screen at the top is the brake cylinder pressure gauge. So as I release the brakes, then the needles there point up gradually fall towards zero, and when the needles are pointing at zero, then the brakes are fully released. And just here is actually the brake handle, so if I move the brake handle all of the way to the release position there, there's now six steps of braking to use, so you've got step one there, two, three, four, five, six, which is full service. And there is, of course, a seventh step, which is the emergency position, which I certainly don't intend to use on this journey today. I will say that the brakes on this train don't seem particularly effective, so I'm going to brake a bit earlier than I normally would for trains travelling at the speeds that we'll be going at on this journey. I'm also going to brake a bit harder than it would normally seem, so I'm going to be using um, not, or should I say, steps four, five, or six of braking quite often to try and bring our speed down, especially if I don't judge it quite right, which is fairly easy to do in this particular train. 
Now in front of us here we've got the speedometer on the right hand side measured in miles per hour and then in the middle there we've actually got the speed set display which is currently at 110 miles per hour. So I'm now going to reduce that by pressing the C key. Um, with the default Armstrong Powerhouse Class 90 and with most of their trains with speed set, you would use the full stop and the comma key to adjust this. Um, but because this is the Steam version and Dovetail Games seem to prefer using Y and C to control the speed set, they're the keys for controlling it on this version of the Class 90. So I've just reduced the speed set there to 15 miles per hour, which is the current speed limit, and now the train won't go above 15 miles per hour until I've increased the speed set with the Y key. The speed set on this particular train can also utilize the brakes to help maintain the speed on a downward gradient, but it's not recommended to use the speed sets um, for a reduction in the speed limit. So say you were going from 80 to 60 miles per hour, you should brake to slow down to 60 miles per hour manually rather than using the speed set to do that for you. So now if we continue around the cab here on this side, you can see there that we've got the throttle control, which in this particular um, train is actually a smoothly controlled throttle. So there's no notches on it and you can precisely adjust the power to control your acceleration. Um, on the very right of the screen there, we've got the horn control, which is a two-tone horn controllable with the space bar and the B key. And so now that I've done that, I think we've looked at pretty much everything in the cab that we need to for now. So let's take another quick look outside the train before departing on our journey towards Norwich. Okay, so now it's time to depart. Let's put the train in forward. Let's reset the driver safety device and get the train moving. So I'm going to move the brakes now all of the way to notch one. I'm going to apply just a little bit of power here. And this is to try and minimize a jerk when starting off, but unfortunately, um, you often do get a jerk when you don't intend one because the locomotive's pushing from behind. And so it's got to pick up the slack between the coaches. So now as we depart away from London Liverpool Street, the starting speed limit here is 15 miles per hour, with just over four miles to go to our first stop, which is Stratford. One of the things you're going to quickly notice as we're departing away from London Liverpool Street is that the frame rate is not the best on this route. This route is quite famous for bad frame rates when you've got a realistic traffic pattern. And I've custom created this scenario, adding in all of the AI trains that you would see in reality. Now, unfortunately, I did have to cancel one to prevent a, an AI consist collision. But I'm sure for anyone who regularly uses Abellio Greater Anglia services, um, cancellations really aren't all too rare. The speed limit here is now going up to 30 miles per hour, but I've got to wait until the whole train has cleared. And at this speed, with this length of train, it's going to take a little while before I'm able to accelerate further. As we go, as we move away from London, should I say, the frame rate will actually smooth out a bit. Um, so the further away from London we get, the better the frame rate should look in this video. As we reach this next overbridge just coming up, I'm then able to start accelerating up to 30 miles per hour. So I'm just cutting the power back a bit now just to try and prevent a jolt as I increase the speed set. There's still a slight jolt there, you may have noticed, but it wasn't as bad as it would have otherwise been. And the speed limit here is now going up further to 40 miles per hour. Though I've got to wait until we've reached a Gerda overbridge coming up shortly before I'm able to accelerate up towards 40. So we've now reached the Gerda overbridge. I'm going to increase the speed set to 40 miles per hour and just allow the train to continue accelerating. We're actually going uphill at the moment, which will reduce our acceleration rate. And then the gradient will level out once we've reached Bethnal Green Station, which has platforms only on the suburban lines, which are on the left-hand side. 
So we're currently running as six tracks with the suburban lines on the left, the main lines in the middle and the electric lines on the right hand side. The electric lines are the slow lines on this route. And then just after Bethnal Green Station, the suburban lines are going to uh, diverge away from us. And then we're going to be running as four track to, as far as Shenfield. And then beyond Shenfield, we're just a double track route all of the way to Norwich. So we're now passing Bethnal Green Station. The speed limit here is now increasing to 60 miles per hour. And we can accelerate towards that just at the next crossover point just coming up. You can just see the points coming up now, so I'm going to reduce the power a little there. And now I'm going to increase the speed set up to 60. This is actually a route that I wanted to cover quite some time ago, but unfortunately, uh, with the scenario that I created, uh, the game kept crash dumping because it just couldn't handle the traffic pattern, even when I tried to use the Sunday timetable. Um, so now that with the advent of 64-bit train simulator, I'm finally able to drive this route in its entirety without the game crash dumping. The speed limit has now just gone up to 70 miles per hour. I do also believe that the surface that I'm driving in this video is um, actually a replica of one of my earliest videos on this channel, which was where I drove from London Liverpool Street to Ipswich in a Class 90 set, and I think it was following the same stopping pattern as this one, so it's great to be able to remake that video in higher quality and also be able to drive the full run all of the way to Norwich. Coming up shortly will be a neutral section. Once we've reached the neutral section, I'm going to idle the power, as at that point we've got three quarters of a mile to go to an upcoming 50 mile per hour speed limit, so we'll just reach the neutral section now. So we've got three quarters of a mile to an upcoming 50 limit and one and a quarter miles to go to our stop. Unfortunately, the area around Stratford has got the uh, worst frame rates of the whole route, so um, we've just got to put up with a bit of lag here. Uh, before we've reached the other side of Stratford. On our left hand side at this point is the Olympic Park which was home to the 2012 London Olympics and now we've just reached the crossover point there with the track diverging to the left. I've now got the brakes on for the upcoming 50 mile per hour speed limit. The brakes are currently in step 4 which has slowed us down quite nicely here. The 50 speed restriction is now in force. I'm going to just reduce the braking slightly but continue to slow down as Stratford Station is coming up just ahead. And Stratford Station is going to feature in another video that I'm going to be making soon. I'm going to be doing a run on the North London line between Clapham Junction and Stratford as I've not covered any journeys in that direction on that route yet. So I've actually already done the preparations for recording that and I'm hoping to record that along with several other videos over the next few days. Here at Stratford Station, I'm aiming to stop at the end of the platform, as I am at most stations on this journey. I do also need to bear in mind that we currently have a single yellow signal at the end of the platform here. Just reducing the braking as we were stopping just a little bit too early there. We should now be stopping in just about the right place.
Departing away from Stratford, the speed limit here is now 80 miles per hour, and we've got around 25 and three quarter miles to go to our next stop, which is Chelmsford. And we've just departed here on a double yellow signal, and do need to bear that in mind and keep an eye on the signals ahead as we travel towards Chelmsford. We're now coming up on Maryland Station and we're currently running wrong line just briefly before we cross over onto the down main shortly after passing through Maryland. So we've now crossed from the up main onto the down main and as soon as the rear of the train has cleared the junction there then the speed limit is immediately going up to 90 miles per hour. We're now coming up on Forest Gate Station. just reached another neutral section here and whilst neutral section functionality hasn't been simulated I do tend to like to shut off the power if I notice the neutral section there. We're now passing Manor Park station. I have noticed that the neutral sections when leaving London on this route seem to be much closer together than on other routes and I'm not sure why that is so if anyone's aware of why the neutral sections seem so close together then please do let me know in the comments. We're now coming up on the Ilford flyover where the electric lines which have been on our right since Liverpool Street will now cross over the top of this line and then descend and come down on the left hand side where they will remain for the remainder of the journey to Shenfield. We're also now coming up on Ilford station. We're now passing Ilford Depot on the left hand side. We're now passing Seven Kings Station, and I do see there that we've got a yellow signal ahead. So I'm now shutting off the power, and I'm going to apply the brakes in a moment. we a double yellow there, but I've now got to apply the brakes to start bringing our speed off to ensure that we don't end up having a spad, especially as the signal spacing here is pretty close together.
We're now coming up on Good Mays Station. As we're still travelling under double yellow signals here, I've decided to now release the brakes and just allow the train to coast at this speed. If we do encounter a single yellow, then I will immediately brake to prepare to stop at the next signal, assuming that it's displaying a red aspect until I can see otherwise. We're now coming up on Chadwell Heath Station. It looks like the signal ahead has now in fact cleared to a green aspect, so I'm just going to give us a bit of power to bring our speed up, but I'm not going to bring our speed up too quickly um, because it seems like we're following a train between here and likely Shenfield. So we've just reached another neutral section here, just shutting off the power for a moment. I'll bring the power back up as we approach this next signal just coming up. As that signal is clearly a green aspect, I'm now going to increase the power a bit further just to increase our acceleration rate back up towards line speed. We're now coming up on Romford Station with 17 and a half miles to go to Chelmsford. See that once again we have a double yellow ahead though it's just jumped to a green so I've just idled the power once again to allow the train to coast and if we happen upon a double yellow again then I will apply the brakes to bring our speed back down. We're now passing Gidea Park Station. Gidea Park carriage sidings are now on the left hand side.
we've now just reached yet another neutral section, uh, though this time I'm not currently drawing any power, so I don't need to do anything with the power handle. In a moment we're going to be passing through Harold Wood Station. see that the signal ahead is now green so I'm now going to give us a bit of power just to bring our speed up a bit. You can also see that the following signal is now green so I've gone up to full power to start accelerating back up towards line speed. Something that was definitely missing from my previous runs on this route was the class 315 as AI on the electric lines here. It's really great to have that now from Wagons and Armstrong Powerhouse as that was the really one missing train for the AI. Um, although for more modern day scenarios we do kind of now need a class 345 which is the new unit which is being used on the cross rail route. Since Harold Wood, we've been on a climbing gradient of 1 in 98, which has been affecting our acceleration rate, and that's why it's taking us quite a while to get back up towards 90 miles per hour. We're now coming up on Brentwood Station. As the signal there just jumped from a double yellow to a green, I've just shut off the power now to allow the train to coast. And I think we're going uphill slightly as well, which means that we'll slow down a little bit quicker than we usually would. And now as we approach this next signal, I'm now going to apply the brakes to bring our speed down. We do now have a green signal, which means I believe the train ahead has now turned off this route at Shenfield, and we should now have green signals pretty much all of the way through to Chelmsford. The speed limit will soon be dropping to 75 miles per hour, and we've just reached the warning for that now, which is half a mile from the speed limit itself. The 75 speed limit comes into force at the first overbridge after we've finished rounding this left-hand curve. Speed limits now just dropped to 75 miles per hour, but we'll be further increasing to 80 miles per hour just before we reach the platform at Shenfield Station, which is just coming up now. So 
So now we're at Shenfield. I'm going to increase the speed set back up to 80 miles per hour. And here at Shenfield, we've got nine and a half miles to go to Chelmsford. You may have noticed that I'm using um, fewer external view shots than I usually would in my videos and that's just because the frame rate I feel is just too bad at this point of the route to be able to get really good external shots of the train moving. Um, but there will be some featuring a bit further up in the video. The speed limit's now going up further to 90 miles per hour but we just reached a neutral section there. So I've just shut off the power for a moment. I will increase the speed set now to 90 and that'll give us the power back to accelerate back up to line speed. The first 100 mile per hour sections on this route actually come just the other side of Chelmsford Station. Now coming up on Ingotstone Station with six miles to go. What I'm looking out for along here now is a warning for an upcoming 60 mile per hour speed restriction. That warning is one and a quarter miles from the speed limit itself and one and two thirds of a mile from our stop. So once we've reached that speed warning, I'm then going to shut off the power to allow the train to coast.
So we've now just reached the speed warning here. I've just shut off the power to allow the train to coast. I'm going to apply the brakes for Chelmsford Station just as we've passed the next signal. So I've made an initial step 5 brake application and then I'll adjust the braking if we're braking too early um, or too late. We shouldn't be braking too late at this point but there is a chance that we might be slowing down a little bit too early. So just have to see what happens here. Just reducing the braking a little, though I can see Chelmsford Station now coming up. We did in fact slow down just a little bit too early there. So I've just dropped to uh, step three of braking momentarily. Before increasing the braking once again, here at Chelmsford, I need to aim to stop at the end of the platform. And we should now be stopping in just about the right place. Departing away from Chelmsford, the speed limit here is 60 miles per hour, with just under 9 miles to go to our next stop, which is Whittam. The speed limit is now going up to 85 miles per hour and then very shortly afterwards it will be going up further to 100 miles per hour.
We're now passing the 100 mile per hour speed post, so I've just increased the speed set to that, and we'll certainly be able to reach 100 between here and the next stop. Just passed another neutral section there, so the power just went off for a moment, and now the power's back on. And we've almost reached the line speed of 100 miles per hour, currently doing around 95 to 96. We're now coming up on Hatsfield Peveril Station with two and three quarter miles to go. And at the next square overbridge coming up, we've got around two miles to go, at which point I'm going to idle the power to allow the train to coast until just a little bit further up, about another half a mile or so, at which point that will be our breaking point. Just coming up on that overbridge now that I mentioned. It's got a very square shape to it. I suppose square, slightly rectangular, you could say. Um, and now I've shut off the power at this point. The landmark for the breaking point is a series of houses on the right hand side. Shortly after we've started passing those houses, I will then make a step five brake application. So I can just see the houses coming up now on the right. And we're just now starting to pass them, so I'm now making a step 5 brake application, which should be roughly the correct braking point there for Whittam Station. I see um, this kind of braking when you're braking from high speed way beyond your visibility, a bit like the sort of landing experience that you'd get from Flight Simulator. This is the Train Simulator version of that, where you've really got to be very precise to try and ensure that you end up stopping where you um, are meant to. 
and it's my favourite kind of stop actually, to be stopping a train from uh, quite a high speed, um, way beyond your visibility, where you can't actually see where you're stopping when you've got to apply the brakes. I can now see Whittam Station is coming up. We're doing 45 miles per hour at present. Seems like we're slowing down quite nicely, actually, uh, for the stop here. Don't really want to be entering the platform any faster than 30 to 35 miles per hour. Just reducing the braking by one step. Once again, I'm aiming to stop at the end of the platform, though here at Whittam the entire train doesn't actually quite fit. So the, uh, the locomotive at the rear will be sticking out of the um, other end of the platform. Now just reducing the braking further as we're getting closer to stopping, and it looks like we might stop slightly too early. But I'd say that all in all that was a, a, a very good choice of braking point in terms of stopping quite precisely at this station. It's very easy to get a train moving, but it's very challenging to get one to stop, and that's where I think that the challenge really is when driving in Train Simulator. And so here we are, arrival at Whittam. Departing away from Whittam, the starting speed limit here is 100 miles per hour, with around 13 miles to go to the next stop, which is Colchester. And the line just diverging to the left there is the Braintree branch, which has been simulated within Train Simulator, and I've actually driven um, both ways along that branch very early on in this channel. I drove a journey from Whittam to Braintree, just a short run in a class 321 I think it was. And then I did the return journey from Braintree all of the way to London, Liverpool Street, but I did it at night time. Uh, it's the only real night time video I've ever done. There was another one that I did on the Glasgow Airport rail link, but that was at winter time where things were a bit brighter. But driving from Braintree to Liverpool Street, it was certainly challenging because you could barely see anything. Uh, I managed to get all of the braking points correct and so on. But I just don't think that nighttime videos make for very interesting viewing on the channel due to the fact that you can't really see much, which is why all of my videos um, are pretty much done during the daytime, though I do often do them at dawn or dusk because I prefer the light levels at that time of day. Um, if you could see more in nighttime videos, then I would actually make more, because personally I really enjoy driving at night within Train Simulator. I find it very atmospheric, and it really adds to the challenge as well of trying to know where you are, especially when you've got the HUD switched off.
We're now coming up on Kelverden Station with nine and a half miles to go. Just passed another neutral section there, so just powered off and now powered back on again. We're now coming up on Mark's Tay Station with five and a quarter miles to go to Colchester. And joining us from the left hand side here is the diesel only Sudbury branch, which unfortunately hasn't been simulated in Train Simulator, though it was in the Microsoft Train Simulator version of this route. Certainly remember the days of driving this route in Microsoft Train Simulator, which had uh, pretty much, I think, all of the branches included, such as the South End, Southminster. Um, Clack, uh, sorry, Walton on the Nays, Clacton, um, and that was actually really good for Microsoft Train Simulator. I'd love to see if all of the branches could be done realistically within Train Simulator as well. At this next signal coming up, which is by an overbridge just here, we've got three miles to go to Colchester.
we've now got a warning for an upcoming 90 mile per hour speed restriction, which is one and a quarter miles from the limit itself. I've now shut off the power to allow the train to coast. I'm going to apply the brakes up to step five for Colchester Station at this overbridge just here. We're now coming towards Colchester Station with Colchester Depot on the left hand side. The platforms at Colchester are slightly staggered so when you see the platform for the upline um, don't think that you have to actually stop quite there so you can see it now. Uh, you might look like you're entering the station too fast if you just rely on that, that's what I was trying to say sorry. Um, and you can see that our platform is actually just coming up now on the left. So we would have been entering too fast for the platform on the right hand side. On this side we're entering at a good speed. And this is the only station on the route I think where we don't actually want to be stopping at the end of the platform. But rather near the end of the platform. And I'm in fact going to be aiming to stop um, by the platform sign just before the end. So the last platform sign announcing that this is Colchester Station. I actually slowed down a little bit too early there so I'm just uh, releasing the brakes. Just in now the initial brake application, just bringing our speed down very gently. So the platform signs now coming up on the left hand side just next to us here. I think that this is the correct stopping point, so I'm going to aim to stop here. I see there is actually one more platform sign slightly further up, but I believe that this is the one that I want to stop at, so I should have said it's the second platform sign from the end. And here we are, arrival at Colchester. Departing away from Colchester, the starting speed limit here is 90 miles per hour, though it's very quickly going back up to 100 miles per hour. And we've got around seven and three quarter miles to go to our next stop, which is Manningtree. The speed limit is now going up to 100 miles per hour. And the route to Clacton and Walton on the Naze is now going to diverge away from us. So the upline is there on the right hand side, the downline on the left will then go underneath us to join the upline and it's going to head to our right um, as it heads towards um, Clacton and Walton on the Naze, which is actually a branch off the Clacton branch. You can just see the lines there just disappearing on the right hand side. Just shut off the power for a moment there due to the neutral section. They are actually going uphill at present so we did lose just a little bit of speed during the power shut off. We've now got a straight through 100 mile per hour speed limit until just before Manningtree Station.
this underbridge just here. We've now got five miles to go. The crossover's just here. We've now got three and a half miles to go. The landmark that I'm looking out for along here now is a warning for an upcoming 70 mile per hour speed restriction. That warning is one and three quarter miles away from our stop and just under one and a half miles away from the speed limit itself. So I'm going to idle the power at the 70 mile per hour speed warning and I'm going to apply the brakes at the next signal. Uh, there is actually a down 1 in 132 gradient as we head towards Manning Tree Station, which may affect our braking slightly. So I'm going to aim for a step 5 brake application at that signal. And I will increase the braking if necessary if I don't feel that we're slowing down quite quick enough. just reached that 70 warning I've now shut off the power to allow the train to coast and I can now see the signal coming up just ahead so I'm now preparing to brake for that. So I've now made a step 5 brake application which should bring our speed down quite nicely. Due to the downward gradient, we're definitely not slowing down quite as quickly as we normally would. The 70 mile per hour speed restriction comes into force just before our stop at Manning Tree, but then after Manning Tree, the speed limit is quickly back up to 100 miles per hour once again uh, for most of the way to Ipswich. I'm just increasing the braking now because I feel that we might not be slowing down quite quick enough. As I can see the platform's ahead and we're still doing 50 miles per hour. Don't really want to be entering the platform any faster than around 35. We're now down to 40. And 35. I'm now going to reduce the braking slightly. Here at Manning Tree I'm aiming to stop at the end of the platform. We should now be stopped in just about the right place. Departing away from Manning Tree, the speed limit here is currently 70 miles per hour, with around nine and a third miles to go to our next stop, which is Ipswich. The route just about to diverge away from us to the right is the route through to Harwich Town. That is a route that I've actually now covered in both directions, I think in a class 321 in both directions as well. And I'm considering potentially um, covering that route all of the way between Harwich and London Liverpool Street. 
at some point. Um, as well as the Colchester Town bit, that's two routes I've really not covered. So I want to do Harwich to London Liverpool Street and also London Liverpool Street to Colchester Town. Uh, one of those at least in a class 360, as I've not yet made a video in the class 360. So I just shut off the power there for a moment due to the neutral section. I'm now accelerating once again. The speed limit has now also just gone up to 80 miles per hour. Speed limits now increasing further back up to the maximum line speed of 100 miles per hour.
So we do have a double yellow signal ahead. The signal spacing here is actually quite long, about a mile between signals. Um, but I have now shut off the power and I'm going to apply some light braking just to start bringing our speed down a little. We also now have a warning for an upcoming 70 mile per hour speed restriction which is one and two thirds of a mile from the speed limit itself. now reached a single yellow signal so I've now got the brakes on up to step five to really start bringing that speed off now preparing to stop at the next signal. At the signal that we just passed there was also um, just over one mile to go to the upcoming 70 mile per hour speed limit. So we've now got an AWS warning for another Morpeth board, which is a warning of a speed reduction down to 45 miles per hour. And this Morpeth board is in fact around half a mile from the speed limit itself. I can also see the red signal coming up just ahead. So I'm now continuing to slow down for that. I was probably approaching the red there slightly too fast at the AWS ramp, but I managed to get the speed down quick enough. We've now come to a gentle stop in front of the signal, and we're actually just waiting for the class 360 that you can see ahead to clear our track, as it left a lip, uh, Ipswich, should I say. Um, it had to be on our track for a moment before it could cross over onto the upline. So our signal's just jumped to a green, we can now accelerate, and we can't go to any faster than 45 miles per hour, as the 45 mile per hour speed limit will be coming into force very shortly. And then once we've reached the 45 limit, um, we will then soon have to slow down for an upcoming 30 mile per hour speed restriction. So we're now passing the 70 mile per hour speed post. If we hadn't been held up by the signal there, we'd certainly have to be down to 70 by that point. But probably slightly before that, as we'd actually have been braking to slow down to 45 in time for the 45 speed post. So we've now just reached the warning for the upcoming 30 mile per hour speed restriction. I've shut off the power at this point to allow the train to coast. I'm going to apply the brakes for the 30 as we pass the 45 post, which is just coming up now. down to 30 miles per hour in time and we're now passing through the only tunnel on the Great Eastern Main Line which is Stoke Tunnel just uh, to the south of Ipswich Station. If 
from this point I'm just going to allow the train to coast and I'm going to apply the brakes as we enter the platform here aiming to stop at the end of the platform. So I just want to stop just in front of the signal here. It's just approaching it slightly too quick to so just increase the braking. But we're going to stop a bit closer. Yeah, we just slightly passed the signal there as the signal just jumped to red. That doesn't mean that it's red for us. Just at the front of the train has slightly passed the signal into the next signal section. And so here we are, arrival at Ipswich. Departing away from Ipswich, the speed limit here is currently 40 miles per hour, with just under 12 miles to go to our next stop, which is Stowmarket. So from this point this is all new track that I've not yet covered on the channel and I certainly think that for freeware this is very good quality and it's great to have the link uh, between Ipswich and Norwich that was missing from the original Great Eastern mainline. Um, it's certainly very nice to be able to drive the full run all of the way from London or conversely of course to London from Norwich rather than starting from Ipswich. The speed limit's just gone up to 85 miles per hour. If I do ultimately cover this route in full in the opposite direction between Norwich and London Liverpool Street, then I intend to do so in a Class 86 as they used to run along here, um, possibly in intercity days or maybe in Greater Anglia days. Uh, but certainly I would like to, uh, not Greater Anglia, sorry, uh, Anglia Railways days, a correction on that. Um, just because I, I think it's nice to have a bit of variety there and um, there's not many places really to be able to drive the class 86 there's this route and you've got the west coast main line um, which is the only other place you can really drive it west coast main line over Shat, west coast main line north and west coast main line trent valley The speed limit is now going up further to 100 miles per hour once again.
I must say the cab certainly seems to be swaying a lot more on this section. I found that on my practice runs preparing for this video as well, that uh, once I got north of Ipswich that the cab does seem to sway an awful lot more than usual. Um, sending my eyes slightly funny it was earlier, so hopefully um, it doesn't come across too badly in the video. We're now coming up on Needham Market Station with three and a half miles to go. the signal just here we've now got two and a third miles to go to Stow Market now we're passing a neutral section warning sign immediately after the signal with two miles to go at this point I'm now idling the power to allow the train to coast then coming up shortly we will be a warning for an upcoming 70 mile per hour speed restriction which we've just reached now that's one mile from the speed limit and one and two thirds of a mile from our stop I'm going to apply the brakes in a moment just as we're passing the factory here on the left hand side. So we've got a single yellow signal there. That's actually because the uh, signal at the end of Stow Market platform is currently stuck at red. I also noticed that we just passed over a ground signal that was actually in between the rails just there. I'm not quite sure what it was doing there. Um, but yes, yeah, so the uh, signal at the other end of Stow Market platform is stuck at red. 
and as a result of that I'm going to have to request permission to pass the signal at danger. I just released the brakes momentarily as I realised that we were slowing down slightly too quickly. I could have braked slightly later for the stop here. The speed limit's now going back up from 70 to 90 miles per hour as we've just passed the 90 mile per hour speed post there. So again we're slowing down slightly too early and I'm aiming to stop at the end of the platform just immediately before the signal. And so this should be roughly the correct stopping point. And here we are, arrival at Stow Market. Departing away from Stow Market, I have just requested permission to pass the signal at danger here, so we are now cleared to proceed. The speed limit here is currently 90 miles per hour, with just under 14 and a half miles to go to our next stop, which is Dis. The speed limit is now going back up to 100 miles per hour once again, and it's now going to be at 100 all of the way to Dis. With the current gradient plus the acceleration rate of this train, we will have actually travelled about four and a half miles by the time we've been able to reach 100 miles per hour. And so once we've reached 100, or roughly that point, we should have around 10 miles to go to Dis.
So now we're reaching 100 miles per hour, we're pretty close to 10 miles to go to this. And this will be confirmed by uh, some crossovers coming up in a moment. Once we've reached those crossovers, then I definitely know that we are around 10 miles away. And so we'll just reach the crossover now. The next landmark uh, along here will be the next signal after the crossover there, which is a distance signal. And that's about three miles away. So at that signal, we've then got seven miles to go. Just past the distance signal there with around seven miles to go. The main signal should now be coming up soon. So we've now just come up on the main signal. So the next landmark I'm looking out for now will be the next distance signal. At that point, we've got two and two thirds of a mile to go to this. So we're now coming up on the next distance signal with two and two thirds of a mile to go. At the next main signal, we've got around one and a half miles to go. And it's around the area of the next main signal that I'm going to start applying the brakes for our stop. OK, 
can now see that signal coming up ahead, so I'm now going to cut off the power at this point, just allow the train to coast. And we've now reached the main signal, and I'm now going to apply the brakes. I'm going to make a step 5 brake application, and then adjust the braking as we get closer to this station. actually just reduced the braking a bit as I felt that we were slowing down slightly too quickly. But I can now see the platforms coming up just ahead so I'm now increasing the braking again to try and enter the platform at no faster than 35 miles per hour and here at this I'm aiming to stop right at the end of the platform. So we should now be stopping in just about the right place. Departing away from this, the starting speed limit here is 100 miles per hour, with around 20 miles to go to our next and final stop, which is Norwich. And this is the second longest section between stops on this journey, uh, behind the section between Stratford and Chelmsford. Accelerating away from this, um, this time the gradient slightly more in our favour, 
for the acceleration rate. So it's going to take us around three and a half miles to accelerate to 100 miles per hour, rather than the four and a half miles that it took accelerating away from Stowe Market. So by the time that we've reached 100 miles per hour, we'll then have around 16 and a half miles to go. Just uh, past the neutral section there, but I only just realised just after we were passing it, so unfortunately I didn't get a chance to shut off the power in time. Saw a car very slowly uh, moving across the crossing there. That was very uh, nearly the situation we had in the Edinburgh to London King's Cross video when we went bang straight through a bus, except this time it will be bang straight through a car. And the industrial tanks that we just passed on the left hand side, um, we had 14 and a quarter miles to go at that point. at the upcoming signal, which is the second signal after those industrial tanks on the left. We've got 11 and 3 quarter miles to go. And you know that this is the signal which is 11 and 3 quarter miles to go because there is an overbridge very quickly after it.
is signal just here with the arch over bridge just after it. At this point we've now got around eight and a quarter miles to go. At the next signal, we just passed the crossing and an underbridge there, so at the next signal we've got one and a quarter miles to go to an upcoming 90 mile per hour speed restriction. I'm going to shut off the power as we reach the next signal, and I'm going to brake lightly for the upcoming 90 mile per hour speed restriction at the following overbridge. now see that signal coming up ahead so I'm just preparing now to shut off the power. So I've now just shut off the power in preparation to slow down. And now just braking very lightly at this point now for the upcoming 90 mile per hour speed restriction. We're now down to 90 miles per hour and the next thing I'm looking out for now is a warning for an upcoming 55 mile per hour speed restriction which is one mile from the speed limit itself. So we've just reached the 55 mile per hour speed warning. So we're now one mile away from the speed limits and I'm going to apply the brakes for the upcoming 55 at the end of this left hand curve. So I've now made a step 4 brake application which should bring our speed down quite nicely. Just gone up to step 5 just to ensure that we are slowing down quick enough thinking that step 4 might not be quite enough to slow us down. Uh, once we reach the 55 mile per hour speed restriction, we're then going to be going down at 1 in 84, so I'm going to need to be careful to try and ensure that we don't end up breaking the speed limit. We're now entering the 55 mile per hour speed zone and at this point we've got around one mile to go to an upcoming 40 mile per hour speed restriction. I think we're just uh, slipping over the speed limit very slightly on this downward gradient. The uh, speed set isn't quite holding us as I thought it would uh, using the brakes. Um, it is using the brakes but not quite effectively enough to uh, keep us uh, below 55. So we've just passed some crossover points here and I'm going to apply the brakes for the upcoming 40 mile per hour speed restriction at this curve now just after the crossovers.
As the speed limit drops to 40 miles per hour, we've got two thirds of a mile to go to an upcoming 30 mile per hour speed restriction, with a 25 mile per hour speed restriction coming immediately after that. So we're going to just coast at this point. I'm going to apply the brakes for the upcoming 30 limit as we reach the underbridge, which is coming up in a moment, which is a single track underbridge. So we're just entering the single track section now and I'll be braking in a moment to slow us down in time for the upcoming 30 mile per hour speed restriction. So now braking for the upcoming 30 mile per hour speed restriction and then shortly after that the speed limit will be dropping further to 25. Now continuing to brake 225 miles per hour, which is the final speed restriction on the approach to Norwich. So we're now entering the platform, going to slow down gently so that we're doing no more than 10 miles per hour around uh, probably two coach lengths away from the buffers. And I'm aiming to stop shortly after the buffer stops have disappeared. We should now be stopping in just about the right place. So here we are, arrival at Norwich. Thank you very much for watching this video. I do hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, then please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, please don't forget that for the latest channel updates, you can find me on Facebook. And I've posted the link to my Facebook page in the description of this video. And if you'd like to sponsor this channel, then please visit my Patreon page for more information. Again, you can find the information on my Patreon page in the video description and the final thing that I put in the video description is the workshop link to where you can download the freeware extension to the London to Ipswich route so that you're able to drive all of the way from London through to Norwich. Once again thank you for watching.